Welcome to the Liz Wheeler Show. I'm Amber Athian for Liz today. Thank you so much for tuning in. There was an incredible protest that took place in Montgomery County, Maryland last week of school board parents. And this was unlike any other school board protest that we had seen because of the coalition of parents that came together against the idea of having sexually explicit content in their kids' schools or having their kids being taught LGBTQ activist ideas in the classroom. This group of parents included Christians, Muslims, first and second generation immigrants. It was an incredibly diverse crowd full of people who say that these things that are being taught in schools are inconsistent with their values and their religious principles and that their kids shouldn't be subjected to it. In Montgomery County, the school curriculum teaches kids all kinds of nonsense uh, regarding sexually explicit content and the teaching of gay sex and transgender, radical gender ideology. And these parents said that the school was not even allowing them to opt out of the content. I mean, typically, when these schools do have this objectionable content, parents are at least allowed to send in a permission slip saying that the th that their kids will or will not participate. And that was not the case in Maryland. And Montgomery County, for those who are not familiar, is one of the wealthiest counties, both in Maryland and actually across the entire country. It's very similar uh, to Fairfax or Loudoun County, those Virginia counties that saw school board parents go out ahead of the Virginia gub gubernatorial election in 2019. And uh, these parents clearly are, are furious that their taxpayer dollars, of which they are paying a ton, are going towards this particular material. And naturally, the media didn't know what to do with this because they're used to, you know, slandering school board parents as white nationalists or Christian fascists. And in this case, there were a bunch of brown people there. And yet they still, in some headlines, we're trying to accuse these people of having internalized white supremacy or white nationalist ideas. But obviously there is nothing white nationalist about opposing curriculum that urges three-year-olds, this is quotes from the actual curriculum in Montgomery County, Maryland, to find words like intersex, drag queen, leather, and underwear in a word list. So again, this is not about anything relating to anti-LGBT or anti-trans, this is about protecting kids from content that is inappropriate for their age group. That's exactly what the so-called don't say gay bill was about in Florida. It was the parental rights and education bill. And all it said was that kids in kindergarten, first, second, and third grade should not be exposed to trash. I mean, what other reason would a three-year-old be circling words like leather or underwear in a word list, except for the LGBTQ activists who are pushing this, trying to early expose them to kinks and fetishes and all of that nasty stuff that we've been seeing at pride parades where grown men expose their genitals to kids. It's absolutely despicable. I don't even have a kid. And yet I think about my hypothetical child in the future going into school and, and having a worksheet that looks like this, and it makes me furious. So I can't even imagine the wrath and the passion of the parents who are going out in Montgomery County, Maryland, and other places around the country. And what's especially despicable is that the Biden administration is going on the side of the school boards and allowing the DOJ to be weaponized against parents who are simply exercising their First Amendment rights. We can't ever forget that Merrick Garland's DOJ accepted a letter from the National School Board Association that accused these parents of being domestic terrorists because they dared to speak out about their own child's education. And the DOJ even marked these parents with a threat tag so that they could potentially track their movements, thereby treating them like domestic terrorists. You hear school boards and the left and the transgender lobby claiming that these teaching materials are about inclusion. And it's true that at some point in their life, children are going to encounter people who are transgender or, or who are in gay relationships. But not only is that a lesson that should come from the parents in an age-appropriate way, but it also doesn't mean that these concepts should be normalized. All they're trying to do is confuse children 
If you tell a five-year-old that you can be any gender that you want, all you have to do is take a pill every single day, you're basically setting them up to think that it's no big deal to suffer from gender dysphoria or any of these other made up genders uh, that the left likes to come up with. Let me talk to you about American Hartford Gold. Now, I don't mean to sound doom and gloom here, but I do feel like we're on the brink of a massive financial crisis. Don't you? First, we had Silicon Valley Bank collapse, and then we had Signature Bank collapse, then we had First Republic Bank collapse. Meanwhile, our Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, admitted to us that the FDIC and the Fed are going to pick and choose which banks to rescue and which not to rescue based basically on wokeness. So my question is, is our money really safe in the system? I'll be honest and tell you, I don't feel confident that it is. That's why I highly recommend you do what I did. Call the only precious metals dealer I trust, American Hartford Gold. They make it simple and easy to protect your savings, your retirement accounts, your money with physical gold and silver. With one short phone call, they can have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or inside your IRA or 401k. If you call them right now, they'll give you up to $1,500 of free silver on your first order. So don't wait. Call them now. Call 866 781 7499. That's 866 781 7499 or text Liz to 65532. Again, the phone number is 866 781 7499 or text Liz to 65532. So, this is not about inclusion or teaching kids about alternative lifestyles. This is trying to normalize the idea of undergoing sex changes or normalizing gay marriage and gay adoption. And while we know that plenty of people live that way, we also know that this is not the type of family structure or the type of lifestyle that is best oriented towards raising happy and healthy children. Every study in the history of the planet shows that kids need a mother and a father. And if you don't believe me, you can hear it straight from this daughter of a lesbian couple who is devastated that she doesn't have a dad. Let's watch. Lucia, do you ever wish, Lucia has two moms. I'm not one of them, but she has two. Do you ever wish that you had a dad? Yes. Why? Because um, dads are um, a little bit um, stronger, kind of. But girls can be stronger. Have you seen your mothers? They're very strong. Um, not as strong as Uncle Michael. Oh, yeah? So, what, what do you need a stronger person for? To um, like, lift heavier things? No, to lift me up. Oh, to lift you up? And some, I once heard someone that has a dad, and I made friends with them, and they, she said, um, in the pool there's this floaty, yeah. and she, they lay in it, and the dad, and their dad picks them, the floaty up. He picks it up and holds oh. it like this, and oh. then they, like, clean our can. Okay, so you want a dad so he can lift things, including you? Yes. Okay. Are there any other reasons you want a dad? Mm, no, not really. So really, you just want your moms to go to the gym and get stronger. <laughs> So if your moms could lift you over your head in the pool, would you still want a dad? Yes. If that doesn't break your heart, then I don't know what will. Um, there's so many interesting facets to that video. The first that this girl is basically describing these innate biological differences between men and women and thereby mother and father that contribute to the rearing of a child. And she doesn't know that she's doing that. The only way she knows how to articulate that is by describing the strength that's shown by a father. And this woman who's sitting next to her, I believe it's either one of the, the moms themselves or a friend of the lesbian couple, is trying to argue with this little girl who has this hole in her heart because she doesn't have a dad. She's trying to make her think that her feelings are irrational or unfair. I mean, she pushes back on this idea that she wants a father to be able to lift her and throw her up in the pool. And one of those joyous things that you see um, from dads who take their kids to the pool. And this woman replies, well, you just need your moms to go to the gym and get stronger. Obviously missing the point. The point is not just about how strong someone is or how big their biceps are, but about the innate biological predisposition to men to being protectors.
to having that more aggressive instinct, to being carers and providers that every child craves from a parental relationship. And this girl is being conditioned to ignore those feelings and laugh along with the jokes about the moms getting stronger and to suppress this deep, innate need for both a mother and a father. It's absolutely devastating. And this is what is going on in the schools. This is why the Montgomery County parents are so angry because the teachers in the schools, the school boards who set the curriculum are trying to do the same thing that that woman is doing to that child, which is to deny that there is a superior way to have a family, to deny that a kid needs a mother and father, to deny that you can't change your biological sex. And no matter how hard you try, no matter, no matter how many hormones you take, no matter how many surgeries you go under, you can't become a member of the opposite sex. Let me talk to you about Cozy Earth Sheets. You guys know that I have Cozy Earth Sheets on my bed at my house right now. And I tell you this because I love them and I know you will love them too. They're basically like the luxurious adult version of jersey sheets, the t-shirt sheets. Used to, I had this pair, I had this set of sheets in college that was my favorite, except these t-shirt sheets got really baggy. This is not the case with Cozy Earth. It's as soft as jersey sheets, but it's like the adult version. They, they're they smooth, they're tight, they're beautiful. I have the white ones on my bed because that fits the motif of my bedroom, but they have other colors that you can choose from. They're naturally temperature regulating, so you don't wake up sticky even if it's the summer. You are just temperature perfect all year round. They have a 100 night sleep trial, so you can sleep on them, you can try them out. If you don't love them, you can get your money back. And for a limited time, you can save up to 40% on Cozy Earth. Just go to CozyEarth.com, enter my promo code Liz40 at checkout to save up to 40%. You can try them. If you don't sleep cooler, you can send them back for a full refund. That's CozyEarth.com, promo code Liz40. There have been a number of bills around the country that have been described as anti-trans legislation by the media, which really just means banning the mutilation of children. Media outlets will also describe it as quote-unquote gender-affirming care, even though you can't affirm somebody in a gender that they can never be. But one of these bills in Tennessee was recently struck down by a federal judge, um, and this was one of the first bills of its kind. It was promoted initially by The Daily Wire and Matt Walsh, who did incredible work at exposing Vanderbilt Medical Center for putting kids through these irreversible, abusive procedures. And so I have no doubt that these pieces of legislation are probably going to end up in a monumental Supreme Court case because Arkansas has done the same in banning or, or rather putting a stay on a ban on gender treatments for children. And there's a good reason, obviously, why we would want to ban kids going through this. They are not able to consent to these procedures. They're too young to understand what they're doing. And there's no evidence, not a single study, that shows that kids who undergo gender transitions when they have gender dysphoria have better physical outcomes than children who suffer from gender dysphoria and don't undergo these quote unquote treatments. Let me tell you about revolutionary relief. Are you suffering from joint and muscle pain? Some 52 million US adults claim to fight this every day. I want to tell you about a new product called Revolutionary Relief. These days, there are lots of pain products on the market and they make lots of claims. So what makes Revolutionary Relief different? It's their duo for pain system. Here's how it works. First, a topical roll-on, it's FDA registered, that goes to work directly on painful joints and muscles from the outside for immediate relief. Then the gel capsules tackle inflammation inside for long-lasting relief. Both products contain natural botanicals along with a patented, actually plant-sourced ingredient called Canopia Active, scientifically tested and shown to be 3,500% more effective than similar natural pain products while being safe Right now, you can try Revolutionary Relief with this special limited offer. Revolutionary Relief is so confident you will see and feel the difference. They're offering their duo for pain system free. Yes, free. That's two products, the roll-on and the gels, absolutely free. But don't wait. The free offer is only good for the first 1,000 offers. So hurry, go to www.revrelief.com slash free. You won't be disappointed. Revrelief.com slash free. The media is completely complicit in all of this, too. It's not just the schools. We've talked about it earlier and the way that they describe anti-trans legislation or gender-affirming care 
or they refer to book bans when school board parents say that they don't want sexually explicit content like in the book Gender Queer or Lawn Boy being presented to their kids in the library. And it's actually worse than even that. The New York Times runs a kids section once a month on the last Sunday of the month. And in this kids section, a recent issue was called the puberty issue. The puberty issue contains all kinds of trans propaganda, including telling kids that if they're curious about their gender, they should go on a chat room with other queer adults, strangers, who are trying to turn them into members of the transgender community. They also tell them that they should watch TV shows and anime cartoons that will encourage them to explore outside of the so-called fake gender binary. They also warn the, these kids in the New York Times to not listen to their parents. They tell them that parents might not understand that the gender binary isn't real and they might not affirm them in their gender. And so they'll have to go to a different trusted adult to make sure that they can complete their transition. And at Politico, when they uh, had several reporters trying to write about the fact that conservatives and Republicans were campaigning on the idea of protecting women's sports from biological men or banning gender transitions for minors, they brought in members of a transgender activist group to tell reporters how they were and were not allowed to write about the issues. They said that using terms like biological male and female was actually transphobic. They said that they couldn't use gendered language at all and that most of the so-called neutral coverage about the transgender issue was steeped in sexism, transphobia, and a white man's idea of what the truth is. This is at a supposedly nonpartisan unbiased paper. They're allowing their reporters to be lectured by political activist groups on how they're allowed to write about these topics. This has permeated basically every part of our culture, from schools to the media to Hollywood. And it's no wonder that so many young children are unfortunately finding themselves falling into this craze because they think that it's the cool or hip thing to do. So it's incumbent on, on us now more than ever to side with these parents like the ones in Montgomery County, Maryland, and say that we're going to protect our kids from this radical ideology. Thank you so much for joining us today. Again, I'm Amber Athey. I'm the Washington editor for The Spectator. You can find me on Twitter at Amber underscore Athey and check out my work at thespectator.com. And this has been The Liz Wheeler Show. Ready, give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button below, and ring the bell to make sure you never miss a video.